Oh, I've got a bit fatter since I last put this on. Hey folks, it's Finn. It's that time of year again, and I'm preparing to head off for Glastonbury Festival, the best festival in the world, in my humble opinion. So today, in this vlog, I'm going to show you what I pack, what I take with me, with my large rucksack, my tent, and my day pack. So let's first unpack this and show you what's in here. So the rucksack I'm currently using is this one, the Low Alpine Chocolate ND60-70. I only recently bought this a couple of years ago because I was doing a lot more kind of walking and I wanted something lighter. But I actually do always recommend the rucksacks where you have a day bag that zips on the front. I like those a lot and I have one of these. But I do love this rucksack and what I do instead is I just take a day bag with me. But we'll get to that in a minute. I like rucksacks that have this option here of opening up in the middle. Now a lot of people don't like that idea because they worry about it breaking, but I just like being able to access from various angles. It's just easier. So let's unpack. Most important thing you want for Glastonbury, of course, is a tent. Now I have this one at the moment. Well, it's actually, I've had this one for years. It's the ARC 200, but I had the bigger version of this originally. I had this three person. This is a two person. It's always good to get a two person, even if you're going like me on your own, because then there's room for your bags. I always recommend a tent with a porch, because Glastonbury can get muddy and wet. And if you've got a porch area, it just means there's somewhere to sit in the dry where you can still see out. You can also keep all your wet gear in the front of the tent, and it keeps your area where you sleep nice and dry. Love this tent. Roll mat. Now, some people think they can do without these things. Good on you. I'm 45. It's getting painful. Air beds sound like a great idea, but actually they're a nightmare to carry. You have to carry the pump as well, or pay a fiver to get it pumped up on site. And after a couple of days, the air inside condensates, and you just end up with a damp bed. So instead, I get one of these. This is the Therma Rest sleeping mat. You just pop it out like that, open the valve, and it gradually inflates itself. You can help it, I just leave it to inflate. I'll show you that in a minute. This is my little mini pack down cool bag, which I will be taking a little bit of food in. I just take a few little bits and bobs like some porridge, a cup of soups and some noodles. But I like to take the cool bag because you can get milk and stuff at Glastonbury, so I have to get a few little bits and bobs that I can keep cool in there. Waterproof trousers, absolutely. Fold up water carrier. Please don't be the person that stands at the, at the taps brushing their teeth. You often see this huge line of people all stood with their toothbrushes. It's a waste of time and it wastes water. Take a fold up water carrier like this. And then when the taps are nice and quiet, you can fill it up and then you've got water at your tent at all times. I really do take the kitchen sink. <laughs> Not everyone takes a cooking kit. I like to have a cooking kit because then I can make myself tea, coffee, whatever I want really. And this little sink means not only can I wash up my little bits and bobs, also, after a couple of days when baby wipes are no longer doing the job, I can have a little wash in that, and if I get desperate, it's a hat. I love stuff sacks. Stuff sacks and these packing cubes, I love for organising stuff. That's always got socks in. Take lots of socks. Mini first aid kit with all the medications I take, and some plasters and things like that. I do take a little mini kind of bum bag thingy, just so I've got access to like my mobile, I'm a wallet. Kettle. I've got to have a brew in the morning. There's plenty of campsite cafes, but there's nothing like your own made brew in your tent. And these little pack down kettles are amazing. Cook kit. As I say, I don't do complex foods, I just do really basic stuff. And for that, I take this. So it all goes in here together. I won't undo this now because it's brand new, but that just screws on there to make your stove. And then these little pans fold out, and they're just ideal for one person. In previous years, where I've wanted to save space, I have just boiled water in there and left the kettle at home. But, you know, it's, I can fit it all in, so it's fine. It just means it's something nice to eat out of as well. But you could also use that as a hat. You can buy these on site if it runs out. That tends to last me the whole time. Duct tape. Honestly, it fixes everything. Holding your welly, tearing your wellies, tearing the tent, everything. Ideal stuff. 
pick up these plastic carriers in kind of like chemists and stuff and I love them because it means I keep everything dry and I can find everything. Now I do take wet gear but I also take a few ponchos and the reason for this, clear ones, is because obviously waterproofs get wet and then they're just heavy and whatever and it takes a while for them to dry. This just means it protects them a little bit more and because these ponchos are so big you could put it over yourself and over your bag on the back, tuck your arms in, plonk down, put the hood down and actually sit and eat under it like a little clear tent. I love them, it's great. I have to have a pillow and when you can find ones this small, I don't think it's too much of a luxury. This pillow is amazing, it's sea to summit. I've also got the travel version of it, it's great. It's got two valve things, so you do that one up. When I, was, I got it, I was worried about that crinkly noise. It actually doesn't bother me at all. It's got this incredible little valve in there, so you can make it softer or harder, depending on what you want. Just by putting more air in and pressing lightly. And I tell you what, it's heaven. Not essential, no, but they do look lovely around the tent and it helps me to find my tent and also just gives a little bit of extra softer light compared to like a head torch. Talking of which, I do recommend a head torch. Mine's charging up at the moment. It's easier having hands-free because then when you're navigating through the tent fields and you're trying to get over the guy ropes, your head light is looking where you're walking. And also, if you go into the toilet, it means your hands are free and the headlight just lights up the space in front of you. Recommend. Also, do take this lantern for inside the tent. This charges up at home and lasts me most of the time and I can top it up by winding it up while I'm there. It has a couple of different modes of light. It's still charged from last year. So it's brighter or dimmer and it's great. It really does light up the inside of a tent and packs down nicely. Talking of electrics, I always take a power bank with me, especially because I do filming and vlogging on the go. People used to say take a cheap old phone they last days they do but let's face it we all want to use social media so I take one of these and you don't have to worry about Glastonbury because there is lock up so you can put all of your stuff into the lock up for safekeeping I've actually brought myself a new one of these this year it's one that you charge up in the sun as well and I'm going to trial it but I'm still taking this one because I know that this one charges my phone up a fair few times and it lasts me the whole time I'm at Glastonbury and I still come home with a little tiny bit of power left in it so I'm going to take that one and stash it in the lock up whilst I try out my new one that does solar powering. A few bits of camping cook kit like a bit of washing up liquid I've got one of these washing line things that you can put up inside a tent with hanging up to things that are dry, citronella candles, matches from my stove. I do have a spork it's being washed I have a spoon as well a spork is a food and a spork together, if you've never heard of that. Pack towel that just packs down light. It's just nice to have a little wash and what have you. Talking of which, toiletries. I don't bother taking loo roll. You can, at the lockups, there's always toilet rolls there. And for a donation, you can get yourself some toilet rolls. So I take tissues instead, which see, see me through. And if I do need a loo roll, I pick one up. I take a couple of packs of baby wipes there for the tent, the main ones. And I take some smaller ones that are also biodegradable for the toilet so that I can use them to wash my hands and in the loo should I need. Talking of toilet, don't forget your hand wash. This one's great, you can attach it to your bag. Just means that you can always have clean hands because this is very rarely soap and you don't want to be going to that long drop and then eating afterwards. Ew. Face paint, of course it's necessary. Talc, now. Well is get wet inside, sweating, they don't breathe. What I do at the end of the day when I get back to my tent is I sprinkle not too much, a little bit of powder in the bottom of them. You can buy Glastonbury newspapers or just pick up cheap papers and screw them up, put them in your wellies, cover it all with talcum powder and by the morning it does take a lot of the dampness out. Don't forget sunscreen. Even at Glastonbury you can get burned. It's then painful to try and carry a rucksack home. I've done it. Take some cream. More stuff sacks, this one with pants and a packing cube with clothes. I don't take many pairs of clothes. I take a pair of kind of combat shorts that I wear up there and then they go in the tent. 
I take a couple of pairs of swimming shorts. I find swimming shorts are the best thing because they dry really quickly. It's not a fashion parade in classes, but you just want to be comfortable, practical and warm. The only thing I don't scrimp on is really good socks. I always get really, really, really good socks. I take plenty of socks and pants. That's a nice freshen up. The rest of the stuff you can wear a few times and recycle. Last but not least, don't forget, sleeping bag. This is a three to four season bag. I have got a two to three season bag, which is a bit lighter. Basically, when you buy a sleeping bag, just check the temperature rating of it. I know that I get hot in the night easily. Even on the coldest nights, I'm the one that's outside the duvet, so I don't worry about it too much. I take a, a smaller bag usually, but it's been quite wet and cold recently. So I'm taking my slightly thicker bag just in case. I'm somebody that prefers the square sleeping bag. I don't like the mummy sleeping bags. My feet get panicky in them. <laughs> and also this one opens right the way up so that I can just use it to throw over me if I want, which is much easier. Or I lie over my roll mat, which is now pretty much inflated and that's nice and comfy. Now this is a luxury really. It's, it's not light and I it probably could do without it, but I like my little table for cooking on. The legs extend as well. And then I have that with my little cooking kit and my kettle <laughs> and my cup of tea in the morning. I have for that this. I don't drink alcohol, so I drink tons of tea and coffee. And I love these mugs. They've got a really nice wide thing, so you can actually put like thickened soups and stuff in them as well. It stays warm for ages. It's got a nice flip top lid, which is really firm. And it's really good for the environment as well because you can get the vendors to fill these up with tea and coffee and they usually don't mind. If they do mind, use another vendor because Glassman is really, really good at trying to be waste free. Which also brings me on to this. Take a water bottle with you. There's loads of places to get water. There's also loads of stands that do cold water as well. So take yourself a refillable bottle, not a plastic one. This I've just brought for myself. Had one similar a while ago, but this is a new one. So this is a fold up one. Holds up like this, and then once you've got water in it, obviously it'll be firmer. Trialing that this year, I'll let you know how that goes. So that's that. Now, as I said earlier, some I do often recommend the rucksack that comes with a day bag attached. You do need a day bag for during the day for carrying little bits and bobs with you. For that, I take this. It's actually really light because I do a lot of filming. I do need a bigger bag with me during the day. So I like to take one. You can get little fold-up rucksacks though, which I used to do. I used to have a little tiny fold-up one, but I put in my main bag so that when I got there, I could transfer some stuff for the day. So my day bag contains another luxury for me though, a seat. Now these, I've had loads of different festival chairs, and these are incredible. There is a cheaper version of this, but it doesn't fold down as well as this one. So it folds out like this, and these straps basically keep you sat up. Let me demonstrate. Sit yourself in it like this. These bits go as high as you want them. And then you have a seat that you can relax back in. You can rest these back quite a lot. So you can get, you've got your feet out. And it's lovely, it just means you can rest your back for a bit. I just get so tired and one thing is sitting down, but another thing is actually laying back and something is lovely. I love these. You, as I say, you could pick up the cheap festival version for less than 20 quid. This one was about 40, but the reason for that is because it does pack down so small and so light. This is a crazy creek chair. Honestly, it's survived so many Glastonbury's, it's been really badly treated and it's still going strong and I love it. One last thing, when you carry a day bag, really good idea to get yourself one of these, which is a dry bag. So that should the worst case happen, your valuables stay dry. And I pick up, I've got loads of different like bags and stuff I collect over the years that I use for keeping things dry. And of course, my waterproof jacket, which is always in my bag. And I have waterproof trousers as well. I have wellies somewhere in here. Wellies. Most festivals you can get away without wellies. You can't at Glastonbury, even when it's lovely weather. Once it rains, it turns into a mud bath really quickly. I do, however, take walking trainers with me as well, so that if it is wonderful weather and the ground's dry enough, I can use them. But I can use these around the tent and they're nice and solid, but they're a bit lighter to use. And of course, my lovely, trusted, 
festival hat. Me showed you everything. Obviously don't forget your ticket, really, really important, and some ID. All of this that I talk about, or most of this at least that I talk about, you will find on my Amazon Recommend page, and I'll put a link to that below. I've also done a really in-depth blog up on my website where I talk about all of these things and give links to them as well. You can find that by clicking the link above here. If you have any comments or questions, I'm always happy to answer, so do please leave me a question or comment in the comments box below. I would love it if you subscribe. You'll find all sorts of videos from me. I do talk primarily about mental health and gender transition, but also about day to day life, travels, tips, reviews, and all sorts. So I'd love it if you would join us and subscribe. Hope that's helpful. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a fab time at Glastonbury. See you soon. So now we just need to repack it. Ta-da! And we're done. Easiest way with this. On your knee. Arm in. Bring it round the other way. Find the arm hole. And then these tightened. Strap. Strap. This on front. Ten. And we're ready to go. See you in a week.